Hi, everyone. My name is Kayla Steinley. My name is Katie Bachman. And today we will be doing our presentation on Botox as the alternative treatment for trigeminal neuralgia. Before we start our presentation, we have a question for you guys. What are the uses of Botox that you currently know of? We are going to teach you guys about its use in trigeminal neuralgia today. I'm sure most of you guys have heard the term trigeminal neuralgia, but in case you haven't, we are going to explain this condition to you. Trigeminal neuralgia is characterized by sharp and short pain that occurs along the trigeminal nerve that can occur at random points throughout the day. This picture that I included here shows the pain spots that occur with this condition, which are noted with the red areas. These include the eye region here, the cheek region, and finally, up just above the mandible right here. This condition occurs in both females and males, but is slightly more common in females, and there's not a known reason for this. Out of 100,000 people, 26 will have this condition, so you may see this when you are in private practice. Pain along this nerve has known to increase when the patient is either chewing, touching their face, or even when the wind is blowing and hits their face. In order to officially diagnose this condition, the patient needs to have a physical exam by physician as well as have an MRI done on them. This is done to rule out any other possible conditions. And once this condition is diagnosed, the physician can start to look at different treatment methods for this patient. The most common treatment method for trigeminal neuralgia are using anticonvulsant medications. Usually these include carbamazepine as well as oxycarbazepine. Although these are usually the drug of choice, sometimes these drugs are not able to reach their full potential due to their side effects, which we will discuss further on. Some other types of treatment includes local anesthetic injections, Botox, and as a last resort method, surgery. We focused on anticonvulsant medications and Botox as our primary treatment method for our research. Our research consisted of analyzing research papers from different databases to get a variety of articles. The databases that we used included ScienceDirect, ProQuest, EBSCO Host, and PubMed. With each of these databases, we applied certain advanced filters such as articles written in the past 10 years, only peer-reviewed articles, and using general and mesh terms. Some examples of the general terms we used were trigeminal neuralgia and causes of trigeminal neuralgia. Some mesh terms we used were trigeminal neuralgia, botulinum toxins type A, and anticonvulsants. With our research, we discovered that anticonvulsants are a long-term treatment of trigeminal neuralgia. While they provide pain relief, many patients taking anticonvulsants experience adverse side effects. The side effects range from drowsiness and nausea to cognitive impairment. Women reported significantly more side effects than men. Botox injections into the treatment area can provide pain relief for up to 90 days. Adverse effects of treatment can include facial drooping and bruising. Botox treatment is more of a short-term treatment, but may have less severe side effects than alternative treatments. In conclusion, anticonvulsants are a long-term treatment with potential severe side effects. Botox treatment is a short-term treatment with less severe potential adverse effects. Frequent injections of Botox would be needed for long-term pain relief. Both treatments can improve quality of life, but extent of pain relief varies per patient. Therefore, patients should be treated based on individual results and effects. Our research was successful in comparing the two treatments. More research would be needed to conclude the best treatment method. To improve our research, it would have been beneficial to have studies that compared both treatments directly. 
Research also should be done on conjunctive therapy of Botox and anticonvulsants. A question that we have for you guys is how will you apply this presentation to your role as a dental hygienist? Our reference, references are listed below. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Are there any questions? <laughs>